Welcome back. There was sickening news this week from the Middle East. Another freelance journalist, Stephen Sotloff, beheaded. It was shown in another propaganda video from the terror group ISIS. Now, these videos are being countered by the U.S. government. This is a State Department video, it is graphic at points, that uses the extremists' own words and their own images against them to push back against ISIS recruitment efforts. It is up on YouTube if you want to see it, but I do warn you, it is graphic. This is all part of a battle of ideas, one that's going on every day in the Muslim world. You know, every week here on Reliable Sources, I ask you to send me a message on Twitter or on Facebook to let me know what you think of the show. And I heard from a lot of you last Sunday after I interviewed Amjam Chowdhury, a radical Muslim cleric. Some of you said I should feature a more moderate Muslim voice to demonstrate that Chowdhury does not represent Islam. So that's what we're doing here. I invited back to the show a guest from earlier this summer, Rula Jabril, and then I showed her some of what Chowdhury had to say. She was disgusted by it. And here's what she told me. Rula Jabril, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Let me play one of the bites from the interview with Chowdhury last week, and we'll talk about it. What I'm trying to say to you is that people perceive the journalists in general, in particular the Western journalists, in a very bad light. I mean, you only need to see what took place in Gaza, where 2,000 people slaughtered. And for the American journalists, they said that was defending themselves. I mean, you know, how absurd is that? What do you expect exactly for the Muslims to, you know, how do you, do you expect them to treat Western journalists when this is the kind of propaganda that they are pushing against Islam or Muslims? Is it a widespread point of view that American journalists are spreading propaganda against Islam? I honestly think that after September 11, there was view few voices of moderate Muslims. People like this imam is interviewed everywhere, and these are the extremists. But moderate voices like all the scholars that came out with fatwas, whether it's against ISIS, against Al-Qaeda, uh, Bin Baya, Al-Azhar, and major institutions, Islamic institutions, came out denouncing this. And obviously, they are not news. They are not the relevant news as much as this guy who mm. is crazy and go... So you're saying that uh, has an effect on the coverage. Let me play one more bite, actually, I'm because I asked him about the warping of uh, the, 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 the many Muslims would reject a lot of what he says. Let me play that as well. Brian, look, I've been in, uh, in propagating Islam and I've met most of the leaders of the Muslim community. I've been on many platforms. I know exactly what's out there. You know, if you go to Muslims who are actually practicing around the world, maybe in Indonesia, you know, in, in, in the Middle East, you will find they say exactly the same thing as me because I'm not calling for leadership for individuals. I'm calling for leadership for Islam. And I make sure that what I say accords to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. So he's trying to reject the label extremist. How can he reject the label of extremist when he say what he's saying? Um, look, there's a battle of ideas, of ideology that is taking place within the Arab Muslim world, within the Islamic world, between different forces, Islamists. My father was an imam of Al-Aqsa Mosque. He used to be a Sufi. This guy obviously is a Wahhabi and is a Salafi and somebody that advocate for jihadism in the world and for, you know, having Sharia as a law. But this is a struggle that we have within that world where the majority are saying no. If you look How at the polls... How would your polls, father react to hearing these sound bites? Uh, uh, probably he will be horrified. He will be horrified and he will think that the danger is not in the books that this guy read. It's in the brain of this guy, the way that he interprets certain verses. But look at the polls. Look at data that are relevant that come from the ground. Gaza after the war. 80% of the Gazan people are saying no, not only no to ISIS, they reject totally the approach of ISIS and the decapitation. They think it's horrifying and it's not a strategy. It's actually, it has a backlash on them and they think that this is, doesn't represent them, doesn't represent Islam. And this is Gaza, where 1.8 million people are living under occupation. If you look at what's happening in Syria, in Iraq, uh, in so even in Somalia with Shabab and mm -hmm. Boko Haram, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Nigeria, what's happening, these extremist groups are trying to take over their reality and, and, and uh, impose their extremist views by manipulating verses of Quran. Mm -hmm. Look, they're playing politics and they're playing it, unfortunately, in a smart way. We need to counter that narrative. Now, the majority of Muslims in the world are moderates and they want a different Islam. That's the point I really want to underscore because it, it, it disturbed me so much after this interview read last Sunday to see the racist comments that I received on Facebook and Twitter from viewers who said, now do you see how Muslims feel? 
I, I barely knew where to start to but respond. How would you respond? Muslims. He would, doesn't represent Muslims. Uh, even you look at his uh, Twitter account and the followers and the debate he has, he's not really one of the mainstream mainstream Muslims in the UK took distance from his mm. from his speeches and point. from and not only in the UK. Who are who is he talking to? He's talking he, when he talked about uh, Somalia, when he talked about Malaysia. He's talking about people that are. Uh, groups of extremists all around the Muslim world. There, we are, you know, as Muslims, we are 1.2 billion people. Of course, you will find Islamists, uh, extremists. Of course, you will find people like him who are advocating for having Sharia law. But what you can do is look at look at the other side and cover the whole picture. The whole picture is different. I want to play one more bite. This is actually not something we televised last week. This is from the sound check before the interviews. Let me play that. One, two, three, four, five. 9-11, 7, 7. 3 11. Zag <laughs> I've run out of date session. Do you think that sort of behavior was in intentionally provocative, trying to get me fired up before the interview? Of course, of course. Everything is not only, pro it, it's calculated. It's meant not for you, Brian, but for people who are this is a journey of radicalization that he went through, and he's trying to grab other people in that journey with him. And he knows that there will be room, because today, when you look at the way Arab rulers are treating the majority of Muslims, look at Egypt, our ally in this journey and in the fight on terror and the war on terror. Thousands of Muslims are in jail. 1,000 of them were gunned down, killed in Rabah Adawiyah a year ago. What, what Arab rulers are doing are creating the condition for these extremists to thrive. We need to be clear about that. And we need to stop this person. And I'm sorry, at this point, this person should speak in, in no venues because he is recruiting and he's utilizing networks, obviously, to send message to the rest of the people that are in this moment mm -hmm. might be borderline in you know an identity crisis and might be recruited so television youtube twitter as well i do want to ask you about one more soundbite this is from fox news this week because islam is not the only religion where we see where we see extremism or extreme points of view this is phil robertson of duck dynasty fame on sean hannity's show this week in this case you either have to convert them which i think is uh would be next to impossible. I'm not giving up on them, but I'm just saying either convert them or kill them, one or the other. I just have to ask for your reaction to that. Listen, I don't agree with these two. Obviously, they even look alike, if you think of it. It seems like extremists and fanatics sound alike and look alike. And before you go, let me ask you about Stephen Sotloff, the journalist who was beheaded on camera this week. Al Jazeera made the choice not to broadcast any still photos or video clips from that video that ISIS released. That's a, a more conservative stance than CNN or, or most other networks took. What did you make of that decision? First of all, I really, my heart goes to the families of the journalists that were beheaded. And there's thousands of them that were beheaded before that are Arab Muslim that we don't know of. Uh, it's the hardest job to be truth tellers in war zones. It's the hardest job ever to be truth tellers on air covering situation when people are dying. Saying that, I actually admire the decision of Al Jazeera. Mm. They don't want to be considered. And remember, during the Iraqi war, Al Jazeera was accused multiple times to be a, you know, a propaganda organ because bin Laden right. would send his speeches right. and other things. It was unfairly demonized by the administration. Then. It, was, it was demonized multiple times. But in this point, I think you don't want to be used by extremists as a propaganda organ. They already have their messages on Twitter, on Facebook, they have on Internet, they upload videos every you know how many videos they upload a day, ISIS? At least 20 to 25. Mm. You need to counter that narrative. And they're actually inviting jihadists. They are recruiting. This guy is recruiting, and ISIS is recruiting on a daily basis. How can you stop this? By not giving them airtime, I would say. Rula Jabril, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me.